All right. What's up there, guys? Uh, I'm going to hopefully be able to do the stream. I'm not sure if I can or not. I'm on Wi-Fi right now. But I'm going to be doing an audit for somebody who uh, paid me 500 bucks to do an audit for them, which is actually generally one of my lower pricings for my audits. Uh, the yesterday I actually sold an audit for 1500 so this is a lot lower than I normally go. Uh, before I get started, if you if you are interested in getting an audit like this one, you can either apply for one on my website here, chasewriter.com, and go to resources, free SEO audit. If you match the criteria that I'm looking for, uh, let me just press record here. If you match the criteria that I'm looking for, I will give you a free SEO audit. Otherwise, if you want to get a paid SEO audit, you can go to products, SEO audit service, and you can send me a message about getting an audit. Uh, these are generally the different pricings. But yeah, uh, this is the website. Let me just bring up the website. Uh, so let me just read, read off sort of what I got here. So just to explain my direction, the current HTML site was built without ever getting fully finished. I have always been aware that all of the pages have thin content, but I cannot increase the word count as much as I want to in order to rank until it's converted into WordPress. Uh, would love to know if my keywords are working for me. However, I feel it's hard to judge it properly because I can't fill the uh, page with the words that I need to be in there to rank. And just to give you a little bit more backstory, this website is for uh, for somebody who's trying to migrate from HTML to WordPress. Um, before we get into it, I'll just explain to you how I was able to sell this audit. For those of you who are wondering, so just as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the free intake form I have on my website, I generally advertise that as much as I can. Uh, if you can do free audits like this for people and record them, it's probably a pretty good idea. Uh, it's how I've been able to get a ton of people asking me for audits and, uh, and how I've been able to upsell my services. So uh, basically this guy applied for the free audit his budget didn't necessarily match what I was looking for, so I, instead of giving him a free audit and then trying to upsell him on SEO services or into my certification, which is higher, significantly higher than $500, I offered him to do the audit for him for that price. So that's how it worked. All right, so let's dive into the analytics and the search console that I believe he gave me. And let me just go ahead and refresh this. And welcome everybody in chat. Thank you for joining. Sorry if the quality isn't that great right now. I've been, uh, I've been in a different location with only Wi-Fi available, so I haven't been able to do as many videos because I know the quality is not going to be as good. Oh, and one other thing before we get started, if you go to my website and go to the uh, resources and go download all resources, you can get access to my free Facebook group and also my Discord group, um, among other things as well, my audit template, so on and so on. So let me just go ahead and plug this in here. <clears throat> okay. 
So let me find the website. If I can find it. Oh, different account, sorry. Sometimes it's under weird names, so you have to check through if you have a lot of uh, people giving you your, their analytics access. And no, it's in here somewhere. Hmm. Make sure he did send me access to it. Can I? Okay, there we go. Should be there. Maybe it's in Search Console. Sometimes people will say they granted you access, but then they'll only grant you access to like Search Console or Google Analytics. I don't see it. Oh, I see analytics now. I just don't see the Google Search Console. So while we wait for that, let's just go through his analytics really quick. I generally like to just go back by year just to see if there's any major issues, like any big drops or anything. Looks about the same. Maybe we'll go back a little bit further. And it actually looks like it's been going down a little bit. Let's see if that's all organic though. So organic's been pretty similar. <clears throat> Let's also plug this into Ahrefs. And look at the organic traffic. So yeah, nothing really too big here to see. Not sure if he has Google Search Console. The reason why I'm waiting is because what you want to do is you want to open up Screaming Frog. And you want to connect the API to Analytics and Search Console. So let's just connect that now to Analytics and then we'll maybe wait for Search Console. And the way you do that is just go to Configuration, API Access, Google Analytics. Connect to a new account since it's not that account. Log in. Hopefully, I can remember my password. Thanks, Craig. Welcome, Evo. So, now what you do is you just go to your account and you're going to try to find it. I think I can just type it in. 
and didn't look like it pulled through. There, no, that's not it. Yeah, it's because it's under a weird account name, I think. So we'll go back here, analytics, Craig Anthony. There we go. So we'll type that in. There it is. There's the property. And we're going to go back by a larger date range just because uh, we want to. So this is like the first initial audit. So we'll just go back by a year. And we'll press OK. He says I should have it now. So let me refresh and see if it's here. And I'm not. St I'm still not seeing it in Search Console. I did get an email for a second. Let me see. Check my phone. And that's just a security alert. So. Craig, if you're watching this, I still don't have it. Um, try refreshing one more time. Uh, while we wait, let's open up the audit template. So I'll just go into Basecamp because that's where I keep my templates. And we'll start filling this out. Now we're probably not going to do like a hugely extensive audit just because um, that would be a lot more expensive, but we'll still do the phase one and probably a little bit of the phase two. So the phase one is just like the site-wide issues and you'll see a little bit more about this in a second. Industry Craig's in is clocks or something weird. Art. Business type is a national business. Audience targeting, I'm assuming, is you know 25 to 45, who knows? Maybe even older. Average conversion value, I don't know. We'll just say the average clock on here sells for. I think he sells them pretty expensively. Expensively, is that a word? 490, so we'll just say like around 500 bucks per conversion. Date of roadmap is 425. And the time is 528 Pacific. And it looks like he did grant me access. Hmm. Oh, it's because I'm in a different account. That's my fault. Sorry about that. There it is. It always defaults me back to the other account. So we have the search console. So let's go to Screaming Frog. Configuration, API access, Google Search Console, connect to a new account, go to the account we got the access to, press allow, cancel out, and try to find it. There it is. Um, we're going to make sure the date range is within that same range we had before, 2018. I guess we have to manually type it in. And we're going to press OK. And we got to plug the website in now. 
Now, the thing that's kind of unfortunate is this is the HTTPS version of the website, but the part of the website that's probably going to be getting crawled is the HTTP, because I don't think there's a redirect unless I put the right one in. Okay, yeah, so if I put the right one in, then I guess it might crawl it correctly. Okay, I'll press start. Make sure the API is at 100%. It is good. And we'll just let that run. Okay, so obviously the site does not redirect the preferred version, so we'll put a Z there. For some reason our conditional formatting isn't on. Oh, it is, but for some reason it's not pulling. Um, not sure why it's not pulling. It's kind of weird. Oh, well, we don't really need it anyways. Uh, fave icon. We got a fave icon, so that's good. So just put a little check mark there. And yes, private label is my client for the uh, isolated who asked. Robust.txt. Let's go check that out. And we got a sitemap. That's good. Now I don't not sure if anything should be disallowed in here yet because I haven't really looked at the website, but we'll check that out in a second. <laughs> sitemap is included in robust.txt. Let's make sure the sitemap looks okay. And that is the HTTP version. That's the one error I will say. But it looks okay. So let's just make sure we put a Z here and say sitemap specified in robots.txt is not secure. All right, HTML sitemap in the footer. Scroll down. No, there isn't. Put a Z. About and contact page to add trust for the users and from what Google's going to see, especially for e-commerce type websites. Got an email, but we do not have an about or a contact page, at least from what I can see here. However, we could type in site colon name of website, and then we can type in contact and see if any page shows up. And it does not. And we can type in about. And it does not. So we know there's no none of those pages on this website. Okay, terms of service and privacy policy pages. Also to add trust to the website. And so users don't think they're getting scammed. They don't have them. That's a problem. Okay, content marketing and blog posting, stuff like that. Is that being utilized? Doesn't look like there's a blog or anything on here. And I'm not seeing anything. I believe it's mainly just products. So that being said, there's not gonna be really any free lead magnets being utilized because there's no content marketing. And that is also a problem. need to find viable shoulder niches to rank for. Insecure content. I think it's supposed to be unsecure. <laughs> the content is very insecure about itself because uh, it doesn't have a green lock on it. But yes, there is unsecure content because they need to redirect. All right, let's check out the site architecture. So one way to do this is we can go into Screaming Frog. And you see this little button right here? It's like a little, I don't even know what you call it. It's like a, uh, whatever it's called. If you click on it, 
you'll actually be able to see the architecture really of the website, which is kind of cool. So we don't want to see all the images and stuff in here because those don't really matter too much to us. But what we do want to see is we want to go look at the HTML. And here's all the pages. As you can see, the two versions of the website with no categorization. So generally that's not very, it's not really a good thing to have no categorization, mainly because uh, you want to be able to have really users be able to look by certain different types of things. And if we scroll over to the right, there's only a few pages that are receiving traffic. So chances are you probably could change the URL architecture before it's too late, but that's kind of up to you whether you want to do that or not. If we look at the website itself, we do have some categorization here, but then of course the URLs lead to one file path down. So you might want to change that, but might need a little bit more investigation. Uh, service pages built out, location pages built out. This doesn't really matter as much unless there are going to be those types of pages. So because I don't know this yet, based on phase two, phase three stuff, I'm just going to put X's. Duplicate content on location pages. No, because we don't have any location pages, but we can go and see if there's any duplicate on duplicate content on the website. The way we do that. So we go over to a website called SiteLiner, plug the URL in, press go. Craig says he plans to change the URL structure once it's been copied to WordPress. Probably a good idea. Uh, just really depends on how much traffic are going is going to all the pages as a whole. But based on what I'm seeing so far, since you don't have that much traffic, it's probably a good idea. But I will look and see what the top pages are just really quickly on Ahrefs. And we can see only really two pages with average position one for keywords with very small amount of traffic. So yes, I would say it's probably a good idea. Duplicate content, we got 53% on the website and some of these are really matching other pages. And you know what? It's probably because there's two versions of the website, but actually No, some of these are matching other pages, page URLs. So the duplicate content on the website is a pretty big issue. Uh, it's probably a big reason why a lot of these pages aren't performing well, especially when you have 100% matches. Oh no, this one definitely is because it's a different URL. So what you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna redirect and then recrawl. Um, you want to implement the 301 redirect so this does go to the correct version of the website and then recrawl this with SiteLiner because the data is getting skewed by the two versions of the website right now. Uncategorized pages or posts? No, because we don't have really uh, any pages or posts to categorize. Well, sorry, we have pages, but yes, those need to be categorized. It uh, looks like I actually moved one of these. 404 pages that get traffic. Let's go check it out. So let's go grab our streaming frog crawl now. In order to grab this, we'll go to the export button, click on it. Uh, we can just save this on our desktop. 
go to our desktop, open it up, and hopefully we can edit this. I'm going to just go ahead and click this top left button, press copy. And within our template, which again, you can download on my website for free, uh, at least just the first version of it, not all three phases. Just go to the website, go to products, SEO audit template, and you can pretty much just follow along with what I'm doing right now with your own website. It took me a long time to create this template for you to use for free. So hopefully you guys leave a like on this video just because I'm uh, helping you out. But won't hurt my feelings if you don't. So we're just going to go ahead and copy all this in here. And the conditional formatting that we have built into it should just pretty much give us all the data we want to look at. We'll delete the top row. Looks like it's all good. Make sure it's all lined up just like we want it to be. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and freeze this top row. Actually, hold on. We had one problem show up here. And I believe it is the fact that we are not seeing the URLs. And I think it's because we're still in this view set. OK, so I made a mistake. Make sure you go back to here if you're viewing architecture because it's just going to give you the uh, the wrong thing. I'm going to cancel out of here again. Export. Uh, for those of you who are saying you're not receiving the template, um, if any of you could just go ahead and go to this page. Just click on the button, type in your name, type in your email, and it'll redirect you to be able to download the template. Just click on it here. There you go. Craig says, how do I do the redirect uh, from HTTPS or to or the www. So you got to go into your hosting and do it. Um, if you don't know how to, you can always contact them and they can help guide you through it. I've never had a hosting company that wouldn't help me with that. So let's go back and reopen that new template or the new download from Screaming Frog. Uh, again, we're going to go copy all of this. Go back into our sheet and copy it in. And I'm sorry, I, I think sometimes because I don't have this activated on this computer, it doesn't copy over correctly. Let me just try this one more time. Uh, copy and paste. There we go. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna delete this top line. You're going to press view, freeze, one row. Uh, that way when we do all our filtering, we're gonna be able to see what's going on here. So I'm gonna scroll all the way over to the right here and I'm gonna go filter by clicks because I wanna see the highest traffic pages. Those are the ones I care about the most first. And I'm going to grab all these metrics over here. I'm just going to drag them over here. This might not work because I froze the columns, but we'll see. All right, there we go. Perfect. So now we have some data. I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab the analytics data because I want to see what that looks like. And we'll bring it all the way over next to the Search Console data. 
Oops, sorry about this. Ah. Oh. I'm so sorry. I don't know why it keeps doing this. Oh, because it's out of the... I always get problems with Google Sheets. I don't know why. Now it's just like completely frozen. I can't even scroll over. Let's see if I can just grab a few of these. I don't need all of them. Try to zoom out. There we go. Maybe this will help. Oh man. All right. It's not completely necessary, especially since the conversion rates aren't even active, anyways. Um, all I really care about is the bounce rates. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, I can't do that. But I can do this. Just copy it all over. Okay. So, um, fortunately, the conditional formatting isn't set up correctly here, but it's okay. I'll know exactly what a bad bounce rate is and what isn't. So, <clears throat> So these are the top pages on the website, homepage obviously being the first one, and then a few of the other pages that we already saw. Uh, in terms of the 404 pages that aren't getting any traffic, let's see if there are any. All we have to do is go to our status codes and scroll down. And we don't have any 404 pages, but we do have a few 301 pages. So let's see those. So these have been 301 Doesn't look like they're getting any traffic anyways in the last year, so I'm not too concerned about it. So we'll go back over here, and we'll just put X's because we're all good. We don't have any 404s. We don't have any uh, thing that we need to get rid of right now from what I can see. 302s, no. Are the correct thank you pages in place, redirects, for... Uh, for after you purchase something. And it's a little bit harder on here, I think, because it goes to Etsy. So I don't know if you can redirect back or if you can sync with analytics, but either way, conversions aren't being tracked in analytics, which is a problem. So I'm just gonna say conversions aren't being tracked which is a big problem because we don't know if we look at the pages, how many of them are actually receiving any purchases. So if we have no idea how many pages are actually valuable to us, then it's kind of hard to, you know, do anything uh, with the pages because we don't know. Um, <clears throat> Go back here. Do all the footer and header links work? I'm assuming they already do, but let's just check. Looks good so far. Oh, Google Plus is no longer relevant, so you need to get rid of that. Okay, so thank you pages, no index, no follow. I don't believe we're indexing them because there aren't any, but let's just check. The way we check is we just go to the website, type in site colon, name of website, type in thank you, oops. 
nothing. So I don't believe there's any thank you pages being indexed. PDFs, same thing. Type in PDF. No PDFs. So I think we're good. Dates. Just type in a date. No 2019 on the website, so we're good. Authors, type in author, no authors on the website. Post tags, don't believe so, no tags on the website. Product tags, nope, because we checked tags, there's nothing there. Not on WordPress, there's no WP directory. Account pages, I don't believe so because it's not WordPress, but we'll just type it in anyways. Media attachments, let's see if those are being indexed. So we'll just type in JPEG or PNG. No images being indexed. Category pages, there isn't any categorization, so there's no categories. Thin content or low value pages. Yes, there is a lot, but mainly because need to fix the duplicate content issues. Um, this may resolve when website has preferred version set. No meta keywords, I don't believe. And we can see that there are none. Okay, Google Search Console, the correct URL is in there, but we still don't have the preferred version. Sitemap is submitted, I believe. Let's go check. And it is, and there's no errors. No errors, and then let's hope that there's no manual penalties. <clears throat> and no manual penalties. Uh, Google Analytics correct URL is set up because we are on it right now, I believe. Let's just make sure. So we'll go to admin. And I guess I don't have full access, so I can't see. But chances are it is the correct URL. And actually this is the HTTP version. So when you move this over, you're gonna to wanna to switch this. Switch to HTTPS when you move over to preferred version with redirects. Uh, goals are set up, but they're not working, and it's just really the outbound clicks anyways. Uh, SKU markup. Let's check that out. So we'll just go to the website. Copy it, go to structured data testing tool, click on that, and plug the URL in. And we have no schema markup on the home page, which is obviously a problem. Copy that. And it doesn't look like there's any ski markup on any of the website. So especially for websites that sell products, that's a major problem. Yeah, so literally zero ski markup on the website. Let's check the OG data, the sharing data for the website. See what the uh, social platforms pick up. 
So we'll just type in uh, Facebook debugger. Plug in our URL. And this URL has never been shared before, so we got to fetch the new information. Uh, I'm not seeing anything specified, but it is pulling something. Let's go back to the home page and see if anything's getting pulled from there. And actually, surprisingly, uh, there is a OG data on this website. On the home page, at least. But other pages don't have OG data specified. Make sure to get WP SSO plugin after migrating to WordPress. Organization markup, this would go on the home page. Local business markup is not necessary. About markup would go on the about and the contact and about and the contact markup would go on the about and the contact pages. Blog would obviously go on the blog, which would be awesome. Breadcrumbs would go on the pages, all of the pages really except for the home page. News articles not applicable. Events not applicable. Open market mark open house is not applicable. Uh, more schema errors is product markup needs to be utilized on product pages. Okay, so next we have the different WordPress plugins. We're not on WordPress, so we're just going to put Z's across the board. Google My Business Optimization. It's not a local business, so this isn't really applicable. Citations, not applicable. It's not a local business. Web design, mobile friendly. It's responsive, which is good. Just to double check though, let's plug it into mobile friendly test by Google. Uh, Craig, there might be individual OG data, but it looked like something wasn't specified correctly. Um, when you get the plugin that I was talking about, when you switch to WordPress, it'll be fixed anyways. Like all the all the errors will be fixed. Oh wow! So this is actually not recognized as mobile friendly. So that's definitely a huge, huge problem. Maybe one of the sub pages are. And again, when you switch to WordPress, this will fix itself. So it looks like some of them are mobile friendly, but some of them aren't. Definitely weird how this is getting picked up from the screenshot perspective, how it's getting rendered. But it looks like some of the pages are only partially loaded. Um, one of the things we can do is we can go into Search Console and we can actually fetch and render, I believe. Let me see if I can grab one of these. And um, I guess I can't find it anymore because Google always changes their stupid stuff. But let me go back to the old version, see if I can do it there. Web tools. Testing tools. I 
I swear, every time you finally understand how to do something, Google changes it. Okay, well, I guess the fetch and render tool is not a thing anymore. But as we know that it's basically only being partially rendered anyways from uh, what we saw, it's probably just the whatever you're using to make your website. If it's on WordPress, it'll be fine. So no, it's not completely mobile friendly. Site search is not on the website, which would be really helpful for here, having a little search option for people to use. Breadcrumbs is not on the site, social media is. CTA above the fold for high traffic pages. And no, there's no button for your highest traffic page. So you usually want like a explore our favorite clocks or something up here. Some sort of button, some sort of call to action above the fold. Proper navigation, uh, sort of, you generally would want to see drop downs from these categories. AMP is not applicable. Check out the page speed. We'll just do this really fast since the website isn't going to be on the same CMS anyways, but let's just check. The drop downs would just say whatever the like things are that you're going to want to put underneath this. So uh, really the way you want to do it is based off the keyword research and the competitors that you want to go for. So if you want to rank for something like large wall, glass wall art, paste this in and you would find uh, websites that are sort of doing the same thing, ranking for similar things. And here you can see what their drop downs look like. So I don't really know specific to your niche, but generally just want to replicate what's working already for other people. So 2.6 seconds, not too bad. 36 requests. So page speed isn't too bad. Um, I'm just going to put X's on all this because it's not going to really matter once you switch over anyways. But you definitely do want to look at that once you switch over. So all we're going to do now is just duplicate this. And basically all you do is you just delete all of this other stuff up here. Um, we're going to freeze this top row, sort from Z to A, and these are all the things that need to be fixed. Now again, these are all just site-wide issues, so these are like minor things that need to be fixed. Some are major, like the mobile friendliness, but that's basically all of phase one. Um, so I'm just going to make a tab called issues to fix first. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to our screaming frog crawl. And we're going to scroll over to the left. Filter back by clicks. And we're going to start making our benchmark sheet. So this comes to phase two. And basically want to look and see what, um, what these pages are ranking for. So the way we'll pull that is we'll create a new column to the right. We will go back to Ahrefs. We're going to download the top pages. Next, we're going to open up the top pages sheet, copy all of the pages, 
Open up a new tab, plug them in. Create a new column to the right. Freeze the top row. Sort from Z to A, or from, sorry, from traffic estimations as Z to A. Next, we're going to go over here and we're going to try to line the two up. Now, the way we do that is we copy this tab. Put a couple of columns over. And again, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to match the two up. So here we can see large uh, wall art HTML. We want to match that with that. So what I'll do, so I'll insert one below. And now it matches it. Next, we have large yellow wall clock. And all we have to do really is just copy the URL, press Control F, try to find it. There it is. So we'll grab all that, create a new line at the top, plug it in. Sorry, one second, it didn't work. Now you don't really need to do this for every single page, but I generally do this for like the top pages first just to get an idea on what they need to rank for. And for some reason it's not letting me insert one below. So what I'll actually end up doing, because I guess this is taking a little bit longer than I would like it to, is um, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to Screaming Frog, undo some of this, and the keyword mapping isn't uh, really that difficult, but Um, it is important to do at some point because you do want to see uh, which of these are going to correlate with certain things like the click-through rates, but um, I'm just going to skip it for now because some of the, some of the times it doesn't line up correctly and it, it's, it's, it's annoying to troubleshoot. Um, so either way, let's look at the top pages on the website because generally when you're working on a website you want to look at where 80% of the traffic is coming from and 80% of the traffic generally comes from what 20% of the pages that's just usually how it works on a website so what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and look at the top pages individually so again um, one thing that's probably not that great is just how large the text is. Um, not exactly sure what font this is, but 
usually again want to try to replicate what other people are doing um, in your niche looks like the font size is 1 em maybe it's fine I don't know it's just sort of more of a bias thing uh, it looks pretty large to me though um, you know when it comes to the keyword research on this website which we're gonna do a little bit in a second uh, you really want your pages to replicate what the other pages are doing so if you're just doing like for instance pictures with text and there's like no descriptions or anything but the pages that are ranking are doing that then that's a real problem but the top pages that are ranking really not a whole lot going on so we have all the top pages here and the keywords are ranking for again um, one thing I would like to look at is just the keyword difficulty of these, just so we have an idea of what range we're in. So you're going to go to Keyword Explorer, plug them all in, press search. And You can see here all of the keywords are within a zero to pretty much 10 to 12 difficulty. So it makes sense because I believe the website is not a high DR. Yeah, it's about 10. So it makes sense that this website is ranking four keywords within that range. Uh, Picasso says phase two is when you start working on individual pages. Yes. Um, Craig says, what's your advice for a new structure when I switch to WordPress? What do you mean new structure? Like new structure, how like URL or like the actual structure of the website? Cause a lot of that comes with, um, uh, what are we talking about? Can't even remember what we're talking about. Oh yeah, a lot of that comes with the keyword research. So if we go into the competitors, let's go check it out. So we'll go competing domains. We want to look for the overlap. So like the green areas on here. Do any of these ring a bell to you, Craig? Any of these look familiar? The URL structure. Um, again, let's look at the websites that are already doing this correctly and try to replicate what their themes are. So what we do is we go and we go look at the organic keywords. So we go here, um, go click on organic keywords. And here we can see uh, keywords that we could go for with very low keyword difficulty um, with a competitor that's ranking for similar things to what we're ranking for. They've been pretty consistent ranking here for a while too. Actually going down a little bit. So if we go look at the URL, you can see here, here's the way the categorization is for the URL. Um, one thing you do want to make sure you do as well, uh, Craig, I'll just put this in as an extra note, is take out weird capitalizations in URLs. Because you got a lot of URLs with uh, capitalizations in here that are not good. You also want to make sure that your URLs aren't super long, like more than three to five words each file path down. So yeah, let's go back to the competitor. We go look at the URL. And here you can see there's a very specific layout. So we have the metal wall art. We have the different pages. We have breadcrumbs. We have supplementary content on the side. Lots and lots of stuff here. And again, look at this, about us, contact us pages. 
So yeah, um, it's really important that you know if there's a certain theme out there, it's it's important to replicate what's already working if that's what you want to go for. Um, in terms of what Craig wants to go for, um, one of the best ways to like figure out more keywords is to go into your current keywords. So we would go into uh, back into where we were. You're going to click on the keywords that you have. Uh, yeah, you could rank them. They're, the keyword difficulty that you're they're ranking for isn't that high, man. So I forgot we already have a list of all these keywords. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab them in here. Go into Ahrefs, Keyword Explorer, plug them all in. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, Phrase Match. We got 969 keywords, and we start by parent topic. And now we have a huge list of keywords that we could start going for within our ranges. Now, ideally, what you'd like to do is start figuring out clusters of keywords that you'd want to go for within your range. The best way to do that really is to go to having same search terms. And what you're going to do is you're going to filter by keyword difficulty. Uh, you're going to download this sheet. I'm getting paid in dollars. <laughs> You're going to copy all that, create a new tab, plug them all in. And freeze this top row as usual. Actually, delete this first. Uh, we'll delete the country because it's not it doesn't really matter too much. Filter by parent keyword, B to A. And now we have a really good idea of the different categories that we could start going for. So as you can see, some of our keywords over here that we're already ranking for are large glass wall art. Plug that in. Here we can see at the bottom, not really too valuable of a keyword. If we look at something like abstract clocks, doesn't look like we really have anything there. Um, we type in abstract, we can see that we have other related. Now again, you know, it's kind of hard because um, you're not going to get always the best um, data just right off the bat. You kind of have to do some digging. And I find it hard to believe that none of these have any search rates. I'm wondering why I'm not Yes, it's true. Let's see if we refilter by volume. So a lot of these do have zero searches. That's weird. But yeah, ideally what you want to do is you want to start finding a theme that you can go for. Um, 
So these are more like landing type pages for like categories and whatnot. So like clock for living room, glass coffee, table decor ideas. This is more of the stuff you want to go for. You want to go for, since you have little authority, you want to go for more informational type content like this. So 40 best glass coffee tables. Um, this is the type of content that you should start trying to replicate so that you can start building authority. Like this is a great idea right here. I mean, a great um, example of what should be happening on your website. These, there, you can only build out so many product categories before you're, you know, going to kind of like, it's, it's just going to be, uh, it's not going to be a good situation. You want to try to create like informational type content. So this is more, this is more like of the category type pages, keywords that you could go for. So keyword categories. Yes, exactly. You want to go for more blog type stuff. So that's if you wanted to like try to assign stuff to your categories and you can do more research on this too as well. But what you're really should be going for is you should be going for like shoulder niches, like, um, you know, things that are related to your product, but they don't only just serve your one product. So a good example of this is like, uh, you know, top, top ideas for living rooms or something, or um, let me just try to do some cure research. So top uh, interior design ideas 2019 or interior design ideas 2019. And then you can take whoever's ranking for that like these guys and you can see here they have these different you know this is more clickbait type stuff it's harder because the bar is so low in your industry that like you could literally go for so many different types of keywords and be able to rank for them but because you're only focusing on your product pages you're not really creating any authority or driving any traffic um, Not sure why it's not getting me any data. I'm pretty sure these have search rates. There we go. So 35,000 keywords. We're gonna go for keyword difficulty zero to 15. And here we go. Now we have a whole list of like more idea type stuff you see here, gray living room ideas. So that's eight keyword difficulty. We go see what's ranking for that. And look at this, 75 charming gray living room photos. Now again, you don't wanna just try to rank for stuff just for traffic because some of this might not actually have like an intent, but you wanna try to go for things that are topically relevant to you. So like if you wanted to really go for, let's say like things around um, like contemporary or like classic items, I don't know, whatever like the thing is that you wanna get known for, whatever shoulder niche you wanna get known for first, that's the things that you try to go for. So I'll download this, but again, you know, I can only help you with so much with where you're at. One of the biggest things that's gonna to have to happen for you, Craig, is you're gonna to, gonna to need to decide sort of what's gonna to be most topically relevant to you from a content marketing perspective. 
And then you're going to need to start drilling down on informational type content that matches whatever intent you're going for for that thing. So here's a bunch of uh, info keywords. So that's really the biggest things in terms of the top things you need to fix or just most important notes for you. Oops. Make sure you set up correct URL categorization. Um, implement redirects to website and recrawl with SiteLiner to see if there's duplicate content. If there is duplicate content, use canonicals or make content unique. Um, start building authority with info type articles. Figure out what you topically want to get relevant for first. Uh, for instance, start going for keywords within your KD range of 1 to 15 that include anything in regards to something like um, cool apartment decor or something. So even with apartment decor, we go filter by that parent topic. We already have a bunch of stuff around, actually just a couple of things, college apartment decor, apartment decorating on a dime, apartment decor, Pinterest. You get the point. Just pick a niche and stick to it. Uh, number four, um, make sure you design the website to include schema for your products, conversion tracking, uh, probably pixel for remarketing, Um, CTAs above the fold and CTAs in blog posts to uh, funnel your free traffic into some sort of asset you control. Um, No, my text got smaller. Consider repurposing your content on one other 
subsite, sub type of site, or like other platform to increase cross promotion and authority. Pinterest might be a good bet. Um, when people search for wall clocks, I want them to see me. Yes, I understand. Um, but again, you have to understand the difference between ca keyword categories, like service type keywords or product type keywords. Type that in. And info keywords. Uh, usually product keywords are a lot harder to rank for, so you usually want to go for info keywords first. Um, that things people are looking for information around. And then start slowly moving into trying to rank your actual products. Um, where was I? Okay, here we go. Uh, I'd say, oh yeah, make sure you build out your trust type pages, trust pages, like contact, about, terms of service, privacy policy, etc. And overall, try to replicate a theme that is working for a competitor from a content related perspective. Also add site search in there. Add site site search into website with Google Analytics tracking, so you can see what people are looking for. That's most of it. Uh, yeah, of course, fix SSL or unsecure content. Everything else really is going to come down to following a theme and a pattern based on the stuff that we talked about today. Um, it's kind of hard to help much more than this because a lot of it is going to come down to what your content game plan is and what you're going to be trying to replicate um, through some of your competitors. So that's pretty much as much as I can help with without really doing anything else to the website or going through and, um, you know, really kind of figuring out who's going to be doing all your content, what that content's going to look like, benchmarking the content, because you're also going to want to benchmark and figure out what type of, how much content you're going to actually want to add to these pages. But ideally what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a content tab like this. Have a content plan and you're going to want to start dragging your info keywords in here and figuring out, you know, which of these you want to start putting into your website. And then what is that content going to look like? Like, you know, like uh, content length, keyword difficulty, all that stuff. Um, one other thing obviously is the individual URLs based off phase two. If we go into here, we can see that 
Um, there's a lot of uh, URLs that um, do have higher than average bounce rates, which you'd obviously want to try to improve. If we looked at the uh, specific search analytics here, should I keep product pages and build articles but in a blog? Yes, that's exactly what you should do. So if we go into the pages, we look at the keywords, you can see the average position, it's like just fluctuating on and off the website. Um, it's probably just because really, I'm pretty sure you're probably not doing a lot when it comes to the um, following the content intent for these things. Um, generally, when you are doing the benchmarking for the website, you want to match whatever the highest impression thing is and then try to match that within the page. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done here. There really is a lot. Um, I mean, definitely hit me up, Craig, if you do want any extra help when it comes to more phase two and phase three type stuff. Obviously, I have the certification that I sell so people can learn how to do this stuff themselves. I also have coaching where I help people one-on-one. -on -one. Just sort of up to whatever you, you want to do. But do you have any other questions, Craig? Anything that I need you want me to answer for you based on what we found out? Yeah, it's fluctuating on and off here. Was this helpful at all for you, Craig? Like, did this uh, give you some of the insight you were looking for? Okay, yeah, it was super helpful, cool. All right, man, well, yeah, I wish I could do more. Uh, um, honestly, you're still in the baby stages right now, even with the migration or even with the current website. Um, there really is a lot you need to do, um, especially around your content and going for more info type keywords. Um, really the biggest thing, again, like the most important thing you want to do, Craig, is figure out what's working for somebody else and try to see how you can copy that. Um, figure out what some of the competitors are doing that you want to replicate and then try to follow a theme that they're doing. So um, if they have a bunch of product type pages that are like doing a bunch of weird stuff, like adding these huge descriptions, that kind of thing, you know, obviously you probably want to replicate that. If you saw, you know, another competitor that has a bunch of blog posts that are like listing out the top hundred clocks or whatever thing that you're going for, and it's within your KD range, which is like one to 15, um, you know, you want to probably start going for that type of stuff. Um, so yeah, let me know how it goes, man. Um, obviously I've been looking at your stuff for a while, so, uh, I do want to see you do well and, uh, hopefully I, I do see you do well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share this link with you and then, um, just let me know if you have any questions off of here as well. And, um, yeah, that's all for today, guys. So. Thank you all for joining me. Until I see you all next time, happy SEOing.